Hey YouTube, it's Jeff. And Dana. And this is Dark Blue Metals. This is our 100th video. Can you believe that? Uh, not really. <laughs> and while the rest of the internet seems to be going crazy post-election, we're still business as usual here in the shop. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do for our 100th video is to kind of do something, maybe something that nobody's ever seen before. Uh, there have been a lot, and I do mean a lot, of videos on YouTube that talk about the rebound of anvils. And it's been a very popular topic on our channel lately. So what we've done is we've actually gone down and hunted down a few different things. Uh, usually when we see a video like this, they'll have, uh, this is my steel anvil and this is a cast iron cookie sheet. Or this is a cast iron anvil and this is a railroad track. Um, and you hear... Wrought iron anvils are similar to steel anvils and, and back and forth. So what we've done is we've tracked down a cast anvil with a steel work surface, which is one of the most common. We've, we're man we actually managed to track down a wrought iron anvil. Uh, it was given to me because the tail was broken off. And we have a cast iron anvil. Thrown into the mix just for good measure is a section of rail, which is what people are commonly using these days if they don't have a real anvil to use. So, I dragged Dana out of the woodwork for the 100th video. We're about to head out to the shop and get this process started. You ready? I think so. All right, let's do it. All right, YouTube, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be using three different types of anvil and a popular anvil substitute. Uh, these are the three most common that you're probably going to find. I have a cast body with a steel work surface. Uh, I have a wrought iron anvil, and yes, this was a complete and total pain in the butt to try to track one down, but this is wrought iron. This is your typical Harbor Freight 70 pound cast iron variety, and of course, you all recognize the section of rail. So let me quickly explain how we're going to set this up for the test. I have a flat piece of stainless steel and I'm going to lay it across the face of the anvil and bring it all the way back to this wooden pole. Uh, I have a 48 inch ruler on here and I'm just going to use a spring clamp to hold it in place. I'm going to lower it down just until, come on, just until it touches the stainless. That way I know that this ruler is going to be level with the table. It might not look that way on camera, but it's how I'm going to try to keep things consistent from one anvil to the other. Alright guys, this is a hardened steel ball bearing. Uh, I've welded a shaft to it. This is a tool that I made for my Arbor Press. It helps with a couple of different forming processes that I've needed, and it's perfect for testing uh, the rebound on these anvils. Once the height of the ruler has been established to be even with the face of the anvil, I have a small bracket. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put this roughly on the 25 inch mark. And what that'll do, when you hold this to the bottom, we'll have this ball roughly at 18 inches. Uh, I figured that a decent test would be from about 18 inches off the face, so this is how I'm going to try to keep the height consistent with everything through the process. From there, just a simple matter of release.
Alright YouTube, to get to this point I had to edit most of the video so I could see the results of the rebound tests. And uh, like I said in the beginning, we are going to try to keep this um, very close as far as the testing tolerances. Uh, the one thing that I will mention right off the bat is the camera had a much better angle of what was going on than I did. And I can tell you that Dana dropped the ball bearing from uh, 19 inches rather than 18 inches. The way I was looking at it from the side and standing above the ruler, it really did look like it was hanging around 18 inches. But of course, the camera captures everything and it doesn't lie. So on average, Dana was dropping this from a height of 19 inches off of the face of the anvil. So let's look at the averages. From two drops, 19 inches off the face, the average rebound on the steel-faced anvil was 18 and 5 8 inches. The wrought anvil from a 19 inch drop height, two drops, the average was 16 and a quarter inches. The cast iron anvil was a little bit more of a discrepancy between the first two drops, so we did a third. The average of those three drops from a height of 19 inches was almost eight inches. It was actually 7.9 inches. And the rail, which was also a little bit more sporadic as far as how it performed, there was a a definite um, gap of more than one inch between the two drops. So we did the third drop, and on average, from a 19 inch height, it only rebounded to nine and a half inches. I honestly thought that the train rail would perform better than that considering all the height they get, but maybe it's just the section of rail I have. Unfortunately, Dana's been home for several hours and isn't here to say goodbye. But on behalf of Dana and myself, I really want to thank you all for hanging out for our 100th video and for sticking with our channel as long as you have. If you're a new subscriber, welcome aboard. Now, this video was kind of um, a last minute ditch effort to create something new. And there are dozens and dozens of Anvil videos testing rebound on YouTube. And I believe I mentioned that at the beginning of all this but I've never seen a side-by-side -side comparison of the three most popular anvil types that you're more than likely to come across if you're getting into the craft. So I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it, and until our next video, I will definitely see you guys again soon.